Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. It was another big shock in the knockout stages as Croatia sent Brazil crashing out after penalties following an extra time period that ended 1-0 with Petkovic equalising after Neymar had looked like he had won it for the Selecao. The XG indicated that Brazil were wasteful with their chances, which they ended up paying for, but what tactics were on display? And how did Dalic's mid-game tactical adjustment help Croatia to come out on top? Let's take a look. And we'll begin with Brazil in possession and a focus on the magical left-hand side. When Brazil were on the ball, whether they were deep or higher up the pitch, Modric was assigned to man-mark his former teammate Casemiro and Kovacic drop in deeper to pick up Paqueta who liked to push forward from midfield into the front five as well as Neymar who from attacking midfield tended to drift to the left-hand side as well. So they knew that Casemiro would be crucial in the progression of the ball. And they were aware that throughout this tournament, Danilo has tended to come narrow in these situations in order to assist Casemiro in the build-up. So if Casemiro and Danilo were too close to each other, Modric could look to cover both. So we tended to see Casemiro push even higher up, dragging Modric with him and giving Danilo a bit more time on the ball to look to do some progression. But the reason that Modric picked up Casemiro in particular is that they knew that Danilo is not a great progressive passer, so they were willing to give him the space as long as Casemiro was picked up, knowing that Paqueta would only drop deep to help the progression in certain situations. Modric looks to remain touch tied to Casemiro, and we see that Danilo is already beginning to invert. The Casemiro pushes slightly higher up in order for Danilo to receive in a bit more space to then look to progress the ball up the pitch. But Brazil are a tactically intelligent team, so they look to take advantage of the Croatian shape in a few different ways. What we tended to see initially was that Pasalic was very reactive to Danilo's movements, so when he pushed infield to become a second pivot, he tended to be dragged in with him. And with Neymar operating in the half space, dragging Juranovic towards him, Vinicius could initially receive the ball in some space before Juranovic then looked to confront him and as a result there would be one on one situations that Vinicius could try and exploit. And there were quite a few of these situations but for the most part, today Vinicius was not at his best so couldn't make the most of it. So here the inverted Danilo has drawn in Pashalic and Neymar was in the half space so the right back started off narrower and Vinicius can receive the ball. And now he is somewhat of a one versus one, although he is quickly backed up by his winger. So Brazil tried an alternative way to solve this puzzle, and that was initially by Vinicius again staying fairly high up and now locking up the right back. And with Pashalic drawn in, Neymar would now have plenty of room in which to drop into on this left hand side. And Brozovic could look to cover at times, but it was risky vacating the central region that Croatia were looking to protect throughout the 90. So if Brazil were quick enough in their builder play, Neymar could get on the ball and then drive up the pitch. And this did lead to some promising situations, but he, like Vinicius, was not quite at his best today. So as before, Danilo is being closed down by his marker. So now Neymar receives outside of Brozovic. In this case, he immediately looks to find Vinicius, who now has a true one versus one situation. And he then cuts in for the one two with Richarlison, leading to him having a shot on goal. So Dalic made a big call about 20 minutes into the game as he realised the danger of Neymar consistently getting space in that region. So Pasalic was instructed to no longer worry about Danilo but rather look to defend the wide regions where Neymar was. So whether Neymar was dropping deep, Pasalic could cover him and if he stayed central, the midfielder could then look to cover him. With Modric still on Casemiro, this meant that at times Danilo had all the time and space in the world but again, he just doesn't have the progressive ability to play passes through narrow passing lanes. Although we did see on a couple of occasions, Neymar could still receive and go past Pasalic, but as discussed, he wasn't at his best, so it didn't happen too often. So with the clock ticking for Brazil and Danilo still getting caught in possession, Neymar began to drop deeper and deeper, and we even saw him adopt a defensive midfielder position at times just so he could be the man to progress the ball as he's excellent at picking out these tricky passes. But this would mean he could be less dangerous higher up. But in the second half and extra time, once again Brazil looked to adapt. Initially, Militao had been staying deeper, being the third centre back, or even occasionally looking to overlap. But we began to see more of him looking to invert into the centre of the pitch. And one thing that did do was give Casemiro even more support in central region even though he was still picked up by Modric. 
So now, with an extra midfielder in there, Danilo tended to overlap much more, allowing Vinicius, and then Rodrigo when he came on, to operate in a more central region, and freeing up Neymar to remain central if he wished, or still drop into these deeper regions, as the man in the half space could draw attention from multiple defenders. So if Pasalic was on Vinicius, Danilo could get on the ball on the outside, and we did see him attempt a few crosses with his left foot, but they weren't great. But we do see this lead to the goal. So initially, Danilo is in his usual central position, Neymar in attacking midfield, and Rodrigo out wide. But as before, we see Neymar being willing to drop deeper to pick up the ball. But now, crucially, Rodrigo has come infield, and he drags the fullback in with him, whilst Pasalic is also drawn towards him, meaning that Danilo, who is now overlapping, has space on the outside. And now the presence of Danilo means that neither of these two men were confident in going to press him, so he gets momentary space, drawing Brozovic across, and that creates a gap that Neymar can then look to receive in for the 1-2, and eventually it leads to an excellent goal. And in general, Croatia looked much less lethal than Brazil in possession, but still, let's take a quick look at what they did. The first way Croatia could look dangerous was on the transition through the midfield, with Casemiro having moved higher to stagger the midfield line, as well as Paqueta committing into the front five as well, when there was a turnover, if a midfielder was able to get past the initial press, he would immediately be running at the back line, and with Danilo having inverted centrally, there was space to exploit, particularly down Brazil's left, and Juranovic in particular was aggressive in looking to get there. So here we can see that both Paqueta and Casemiro are committed quite high up the pitch, and Danilo is the only man in the centre of the pitch. So now Modric receives the ball, and the first line of pressure is effectively broken, allowing him to push up the pitch. So Croatia can transition high up the pitch pretty easily. But when Croatia had the ball in deep areas and from goal kicks, Brazil could initially defend in a 4-2-3-1 but the centre-backs would look to split either side of the goalkeeper, with Lovren often receiving the initial pass. But rather than Richarlison just being the sole presser, Vinicius tended to get drawn in towards the ball, into more central regions, so with Juranovic now being the free man, Croatia were often able to work the ball towards him, and he was quite dangerous in the attack, and would often drive up the pitch into dangerous regions for Croatia. So Lovren is on the ball, and we see Vinicius immediately being drawn towards him. This allows Juranovic to receive the ball, and Pasalic is keeping Danilo deep, so now he can simply advance high up the pitch. There is now a 2 versus one against Danilo, so Juranovic is able to slip the ball to Pasalic, and his cross goes into a very dangerous area. So later in the match, Brazil's high shape began to resemble their deeper shape, with Neymar being the man to join Richarlison higher up, so that they wouldn't be as vulnerable in these wide regions. And Brazil could sit off at times in this 4-4-2 shape, and they were generally trying to protect the centre. However, Croatia wanted to exploit their fullbacks whilst also getting their midfielders on the ball as much as possible, so what we would often see is one or both of the fullbacks push up fairly high, and in deeper regions, either one midfielder or even two at a time at times, would look to receive the ball outside the pressing front two and keep possession in these regions to try and draw men onto them and force Brazil higher up the pitch. And this is evident in Croatia's heat maps. And as always, this midfield was key to keeping possession and preventing Brazil from applying too much pressure on them, despite Croatia not making too many chances. Overall, Brazil will rue their missed chances as they finish with the much higher expected goals but Croatia are experts whenever the game goes beyond 90 minutes, so perhaps we shouldn't be too surprised. For the manager tactical scores, Brazil did create more, and it took a deflected shot to break through, so Tite still earns a 6, whilst Croatia did give up a lot of XG, and on a different day, they may have lost, but still, it was a decent performance, meaning that Dalic too earns a 6. But what are your ratings? Drop them down below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you might enjoy the content available on my Patreon. Not only does Patreon help to support the continued production of content, as I am a one-man team, but it also gives you early access to videos that will come on the channel. You'll also get exclusive videos, get to vote on polls, and so much more, and it's cheaper than ever, no longer having a tier system, so everyone on the Patreon gets access to all the content. So head over to patreon.com slash football made simple to check it out. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.